Here we have Kurt from Team Wikispeed talking about TIG welding 101. Take it away. All right. So usually I start off with a scrap piece like this. And uh, usually when people start welding aluminum, this is what it looks like. Because there are just so many variables to think about. Um, sometimes you'll get stuff like that, which you're, it's way too much amperage and it's just blowing through. You can see it, it penetrates way too much. Oh, yeah. Um, and so that's too hot. And then you have stuff that looks like I'm trying to find a good something like this, where it sits up too high. Too far. Mm -hmm. And that's called a cold weld. So there's not enough amperage there, and you need to be putting some more into that. Um, something that looks really good, something like yes. that, which I I did mm -hmm. that. And, um, it's pretty yep. good. There's and visible just visible penetration. Penetration, on the other side. but very beautiful looking. Um, yep. And so that that's something to really shoot towards when tick welding. Okay. Um, and now I'll have one of you guys try it, or I might do one just so you can see what it looks like, and then have your hand at it. Okay. Show us one. Tell us about the the welder. And details so, about that. This welder Everlast. Is, uh, Everlast. 1500 bucks or so? Yeah, I think it's 1600 mm -hmm. brand new. Um, it's a PowerTig 250EX. And uh, it's a very capable welder. Competes with the Miller Dynasty series TIG welders. Uh -huh. um, and it looks really complicated up front. There's a lot of different knobs, but once you get to know what each one does, it's pretty easy to figure out. There's a whole, um, I think it's a six series. YouTube videos on using this machine, and I went through that and learned a lot about it. Um, what I search for on YouTube? Uh, it's search welding tips and tricks dot com. Uh huh. And this guy Jody, he does a lot of different welding and has a lot of great instructional videos. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I'll get this set up. Did anyone do a video on this from your your shop yet? You're from Team Wikispeed. We haven't done one. As deep as this one. Here. Okay. So here we have our ground wire. You connect this up to whatever you're welding to, and that completes the circuit. Um, so argon is shielding gas. Yeah, this is this is straight 100% argon. Mm-hmm. This is 8th inch aluminum 60-61 T6. That's the, the grade. Mm -hmm. It's about 10 bucks a foot or something like that. I'm not totally sure on, the, on mm -hmm. what the price we get it for because I think we buy it in bulk so we get. How deal. much are the rods? Are they expensive? Something or? like. Like a pack of this, this is almost empty, but it's like $11 or $15 depending on where you go. For about a pound or a couple of pounds? I or? think it's a pound. Okay. It's good. And then you also have to buy tungsten electrodes. This is a 2% seriated, which I don't, I don't really know the difference. There, there's like thoriated, seriated. Cerium. Um, so they're radioactive. Yeah, well, I think the seriated ones aren't radioactive, oh. but the thoriated are. Um, guys use them all the time and don't get cancer. So I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> but no, I'll take the part that. Well, as you can see. So you have a. Uh, call it or whatever that shields and directs the gas out and you can see the tungsten electrode there that the arc uh, goes from there to the metal mm -hmm. and gas shielding gas comes around that and makes sure that the metal doesn't get oxidized mm -hmm. and uh, take off the back here there's a copper call it that 
holds the electrode in place. It might be a little warm. Um, mm -hmm. And these need to be ground down and made new again. Um, Just ground to a point? Uh, for <coughs> aluminum, you ground it to a point, but I've, I've heard that you're supposed to make it round. And usually with that, you would point it on a copper surface and it would just ball up. Okay. And then uh, you go your way with it. But I don't have copper anywhere, so I just kind of put it to a point and usually it rounds itself. Okay. Uh, and this is all just from, from what I've learned from experience. I don't have any formal teaching, so take all of this with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. uh, And usually when I'm welding, I uh, have this stick out maybe like that or a little bit further in depending on if I'm doing a, mm -hmm. a T joint or a butt joint or a, mm -hmm. I mean, different, different things for different situations. Farther out for, for an angle joint? Yeah, just to get, just to get in there. Get into the yeah. Controls oh, the yes. amperage. Mm -hmm. And so, linear actuator controller. Okay. Manual and operator instructions. Got it? Uh, I think so. Cool. And then I'll turn on the welder. So here you can see this shows the amperage. Uh, and this, this red one controls about 30 volts or so. I, I believe it's 20, 25, something like that. And I usually like to turn it up a little more and then control it with my foot just so I have that extra room if I need it. Uh, and then down here you, you see like free flow and post flow that controls the the shielding gas. You can have a a little bit of flow even before the arc starts, and a little bit of flow uh, after the arc stops, so yeah. you get that shielding. And also you can slow up the power and slow it down beginning and end, just in case you don't want your full power right up front. Uh -huh. Which which one is that? The up slope and down slope here. Uh -huh. you, you got it pretty low here? Yeah, I don't really use that a lot. It's mostly for like if you're under a car or something, and you uh, you don't want the full power like right there. I don't know. I haven't used it that much. The the welding tips and tricks instructional videos for this welder he really goes through the whole face yeah. and all the knobs and stuff. Okay. And on the regulator there. The ball travels up when there's flow, and usually when I'm welding, I use about 15, uh, I don't know if it's CFMs or how, how it's measured, but 15. Okay. This tank's getting a little low. Okay. Cleanliness is a big part of TIG welding, especially in aluminum. So I usually just give it a good brush. once you get doing it, but first you heat up a portion, and then once you see it shine or gleam, then you move forward and start, you just move forward a little bit and put down some rod, move forward a little bit, put down some rod, and 
uh, and you'll end up with something 